my work has always been about families, whether it was genealogy, whether it was helping adoptees find their roots, or whether it was with law enforcement. And so investigative genetic genealogy or any type of genetic genealogy has the power to provide answers and hopefully some sort of resolution. And in law enforcement cases, often justice. And so to me, there's really no greater good than that. Why am I looking for living people? Well, we need to look for those family members, those cousin connections. There's so many different reasons. A cousin could have that family Bible that you've been looking for for a long, long time. It just happened to go down through their line. They could have the photos that you don't have that you're looking for. They may have family stories that are a little different. It's really important to list the information you want. What are you searching for? The, is it identity of biological parents, of one parents, of both, of grandparents maybe? List also what you have as information already, even snippets, because in the cases of adoptions and other um, special cases, there will be really precious, not only to have, because they may be the only clues you may have in your research, but also to question. Well, come to find out, I come from mixed race family. My second great grandfather, who I knew a lot about, his dad, my third great grandfather, was biracial. And his dad was actually the slave master and was a white man. So my grandma went on to explain, hey, you know, that's why he told you that, you know, you're going to find um, you have a lot of mixed blood, you have a lot of diverse blood, and you do have a lot of European blood. Well, back then, obviously, DNA wasn't big. They weren't doing the testing. So when we get now to three years ago in 2020, I do the DNA test on Ancestry and come to find out I'm over a third European. So a major, major tip, build out your own tree, your direct ancestors first, of course, and then especially your collateral lines. Build your tree out as far and wide and deep and robust as you possibly can. It is your best reference set to help you with identifying your matches. The first thing I really want to emphasize here is that you cannot use DNA without research. I've kind of been thinking through this. DNA by itself proves nothing. I can't think of a single relationship that is proven by DNA alone. Even a parental relationship could be incorrect if your parent happens to have an identical twin. So keep that in mind that you always have to incorporate traditional paper trail research is what we call it. So again, DNA by itself proves nothing. Well, this is something strongly that I believe in is every time an old person dies, a library burns. Um, and that's especially true if they did not take a DNA test. Um, there's kind of an expiration date on DNA. It's useful up to five generations back. And so I'm trying to preserve the, you know, how long I can use DNA for by testing all of these relatives in my tree. You can find the ancestor that you are looking for using your DNA and one tool that's available at every DNA testing company. That is a bold statement that I'm going to stand behind and hopefully convince all of you of by the end of this hour. There are DNA matches that are worth your research hours. So if you have endogamy especially and you want to use your research hours wisely, you'll want to find matches that have a long, longest piece of DNA. So this is possible at every company because they do tell you some information about the kinds of DNA you share with your matches. One misconception that I hear all the time is uh, siblings have the same ethnicity estimates. Well, not really. Oftentimes they're close, but even in the case of identical twins, they're not always the same. 